welcome to Healthy TV. This is episode number 30. And on today's show, we're continuing our series on why we gain weight. And uh, today we're jumping into, I think, a, a pretty controversial topic that's that uh, what's, it, what's all about calories and uh, what do calories have to do with weight gain. So I'm going to get into that. But really, the whole kind of my whole thinking behind this series was really came about because um, you know, there's a lot of talk about how we can lose weight and, you know, what are the best strategies to lose weight and, you know, spend any amount of time on social media and uh, you just get inundated with um, uh, different strategies, different quick fixes, uh, cleanses, you know, uh, challenges, all those things. And uh, there's probably a lot of good in there, but what I, what I found was that there's a, a lack of information as to, like, how we gain weight in the first place. And so I thought, let's dive into this topic. And so last week I started with episode um, number 29, and that was part one. And we actually talked about what are the actual implications when it comes to um, our, our lineage, so the actual evolutionary uh, process, and how does that link to overeating. So if you haven't checked out that episode, go back, because that's going to set the tone for today. And uh, really, I wanted to just spend a couple of minutes, I, I'm not going to go too much into detail, but um, I want to give you a good overview of kind of this whole concept of calories and um, why it can be pretty destructive. Right? And I think um, more generally, the way that we tend to look at uh, weight gain is that really it's, it's a product of whether it's um, you know, genetics, um, poor willpower, or this idea of just like over consuming too many calories. And I wanted to dive into that one particularly today because uh, I, I think that this has a real, um, you know, there's a lot of people that get caught up in like counting calories and, uh, you know, trying to keep their calorie uh, intake low. And you know what's interesting is that if, let, let's say you could actually have a conversation with your body, <laughs> which sounds kind of ridiculous, but let's just follow me for a moment. And you ask it like, well, well, you know, what's the big deal about calories? Like, what do you think about calories? Your body would actually say, I have no idea what you're talking about because a calorie is a, a human construct. It's something that we've come up with. There is actually like no sensors in your body um, that measure calories. Okay, it's a, it's a means for, by which we can, uh, you know, it comes out of uh, um, really like a biochemistry, but it's a way of um, applying a value of a certain amount of energy to a particular molecule. Okay, so yes, there's some uh, particular, maybe some very narrow. Um, usages uh, predominantly in like research and stuff where it can be useful but uh, by and large the idea of a calorie is completely irrelevant okay um, your body doesn't care one <laughs> hoot about uh, a calorie in and of itself now what your body cares about a ton and in fact if you were to kind of frame the question as like you know uh, again have a conversation with your body and ask it what you know when I'm when I'm eating food what do you really care about it's the nutrient quality. And so I know that doesn't, you know, like that comes as kind of, that's kind of logical. And uh, a lot of us, even those that uh, get caught up in counting calories, understand that uh, really it comes down to the quality of the food that you're putting in. Everyone knows that, uh, you know, you can have, like all calories are not created equally, right? That's kind of a common uh, uh, idiom in the, in, the, in the culture. So the idea of like, okay, I, if you have 100 calories of, uh, you know, of like straight sugar, it's not gonna be the same thing as eating 100 calories of salad, right? Uh, clearly there's a big difference there. But when it comes down to it, we often get, we, we do get caught up in this, um, just allocating this kind of energy um, number to food without any, um, you know, real kind of importance placed on the nutrient quality. Now, as I mentioned, your body cares a lot about nutrient quality and the actual nutrient density of food. And in fact, this is what tells your brain when you're full. It's not the number of calories that you're eating. It's actually the, um, it's, you can think about it like there's a, a cashier in your, uh, really it's in your nerve system, but let's just say it's in your stomach. And when you're putting food in, it's kind of tallying up. Okay, I've had, you know, I'm getting this much uh, uh, of different types of uh, macronutrients. So whether it's uh, carbohydrates, um, whether it's uh, the um, like proteins and fats, uh, micronutrients, vitamins, those kinds of things. So it's tallying up all this up, and then at a certain point, it's saying like, okay, great, I've satisfied the requirements for these nutrients now, so stop eating. Okay? And that's called the satiety signal. That is a super important uh, mechanism for managing how much food we consume. And in a healthy body, it's actually, it speaks loud and clear. Um, what is unfortunate is that it can get derailed based on, and you guessed it, 
poor diet in the past, okay, amongst a whole bunch of other things. Um, so that satiety signal, there, there's a bunch of hormones that are involved in it, but it can get thrown out of whack so that we don't necessarily get that signal. It doesn't get, uh, uh, it gets downplayed so that we think we have to keep overeating. So um, the best way to solve this problem though is just to eat higher nutrient dense foods and give your body the time to reset. So, um, you know, I, I think there's, you know, like if I was to make a, a conclusion, there's really no link between calories and health. Okay, there's, there's actually, you, it, where the, the link is when it comes to food is the nutrient density, the nutrient quality of the food, and uh, you know, whether it uh, has any amount of toxicity. That is what ultimately dictates you know, health, or you know, moving toward or away from health. Um, so when it, uh, as far as like body composition, like what's actually in control, it's these, um, it's these hormones, and it's our, you know, our interaction between our nerve system, which is interpreting, that's like the cashier in the, in the gut, and the switching on and off of the production of these hormones. So it gets pretty complicated, and I'll admit, like I, you know, I just scratched the surface, right? I'm not a, I'm certainly no, a, no expert in this, uh, the hormonal control of diet or of, uh, of uh, weight. However, what I do know is that the simplest solution is simply to start eating higher nutrient dense foods, whole foods, right? So foods that don't have any uh, ingredient lists. And uh, if you start to consume more, if you increase that, let's say you're eating like 50% whole food right now, if you went up to 60% even or 70%, like that kind of change, it doesn't take that much effort, it's going to make a huge difference in the long run. Okay, not just for um, your body composition, right, like if you're trying to lose weight, but I would argue even more important than that is your long-term health. Okay, whole foods, consumption of whole foods is going to dramatically increase your longevity and your quality of life as you age. So let me just check my notes here. Um, so really the conclusion, stop counting calories. I would not pay any attention um, to calories. I think what you wanna focus on is the nutrient density. Um, so if you're interested in that, please comment below because I can share, a, a, there's a couple of handy uh, charts out there uh, that actually dive into you know, nutrient density and what you can be consuming. Um, but even if you don't wanna get into that, just simply think, okay, I'm gonna eat real food, real whole food, and that's going to uh, solve a lot of the problems. Okay. Um, now, I just as a caveat at the end here, I, I want to make sure you understand I'm not diminishing the uh, you know the challenge when it comes to um, like losing weight, right? I know I understand that's a very that's a huge uh, frustration for a lot of people, and many of you have probably tried to um, maybe maybe even tried this step, right? You add uh, whole foods in, um, you know, and you do that consistently and still struggle with uh, losing weight. So there's obviously this is a comp complex problem. Uh, I'm not suggesting that just doing this one step is going to uh, solve all the problems. Um, however, I think it's a really important one, whether you see changes on the scale or not, it's still moving your health in the right direction. Okay, so um, to get some more uh, ideas as to like what you can be doing, and in particular um, as it relates to just eating a healthy diet, I would um, download the Eat by Design Quick Start Guide. So there's a, a link in the bottom here, uh, just look in the, in the uh, post above, and you'll see uh, a link there, go ahead, um, download it, and in there we go through the first five steps of Eat by Design. That's a great first place to start. Um, if you have any other questions or comments, just post them below, or you're, feel free to uh, email me directly. Um, it's Dr. McPhee at mycanadachiropractor.com. All right, so with that, we'll jump in next week to uh, part three, and uh, we're gonna go, uh, to go into some details around like what do genes actually have to play um, when it comes to uh, your weight. Okay, and uh, some really interesting stuff. I've been doing a ton of learning here, so I'm really excited to share that with you. So I will see you all next Thursday at 7 p.m. Have a good night.